Welcome back from the break. I hope you found the networking time valuable and that the formats we created were helpful in creating useful and meaningful interactions. If you have any feedback, please put it in the channel you attended, such as Birds of Feather, Lean Coffee, Snack Club, or just put it in the general channel. One of my favorite quotes in the Phoenix Project is, feedback is love. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's apathy. All right, so the first speaker we have this afternoon is Erica Morrison, who was recently promoted to VP of Software Engineering at CSG. She has presented at DevOps Enterprise four times and is someone whose achievements and abilities I genuinely admire. I suspect you have not heard a presentation quite like this before. And if you're like me, you will be blown away by this presentation. When she first told the story to a group of us last year, you could have heard a pin drop. It was so riveting, heart-wrenching, and lays bare problems that almost all of us have faced in our career. She provides lessons learned and teachings that will get the attention of anyone who has had to fix production incidents under extreme pressure. I trust that after watching this presentation, you will feel compelled to explore how incident command might help your own organization. Here's Erica. Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about getting back up when you've been knocked down and how we turned our company's worst outage into a powerful learning opportunity. Real briefly, before I get into that, a quick background on CSG. We're North America's largest SaaS-based customer care and billing provider. We do work in the revenue management and digital monetization space, supporting customers such as those you see on the top of the slide here. We support over 65 million subscribers with a tech stack that really runs the gamut, everything from JavaScript to mainframe. We've been fortunate enough to get to share our DevOps journey over the last several years at DevOps Enterprise Summit. In 2015, Scott Pru and I talked about how we were reducing batch sizes and applying Agile and Lean. In 2016, we underwent a major organizational transformation where we brought a development organization and an ops organization together and put developers and operational engineers on the same teams. In 2017, we talked about spreading culture, investing in engineering, and shifting ops left. And then in 2018, I presented with Joe Wilson, we talked about adding more automation, shifting security left. And then finally, in 2019, Scott shared our story on continuing product modernization. So let's talk about the outage. I wanna walk you through our outage story today. And this story started on February 4th, 2019 and what became our company's worst outage. If you say 2-4, as this outage came to be known internally, people know exactly what you're talking about. So we wanted to respond to this incident differently. We took a number of steps and I will detail each of those with you today. They included incident analysis, a uh, rollout of incident management system and a number of other operational improvements which resulted in a lot of learning for our organization. And we also learned that despite how you can, how it feels at the time, failure like this doesn't have to be permanently catastrophic. It's really how you respond to that failure that will ultimately shape your organization. So as for the outage itself, it ended up being 13 hours in duration when all was said and done. It started abruptly with little to no warning and large portions of our product were unavailable during this entire time. I remember getting paged in the middle of the night and as the early troubleshooting started, I remember thinking we still have a couple hours until the start of business on the US East Coast, which is really when traffic starts to substantially wrap up and the pain to our customers increases. Little did I know that not only would we not have service restored by the start of business, we would struggle to get it restored by the end of the business day. Troubleshooting was particularly interesting on this call. We were largely troubleshooting blind. We had problems accessing our tools that we would normally use to troubleshoot this sort of issue. Things like our system health monitoring information, server access, all those were hampered by the exact same issue that was affecting our production services. Every outage call tends to be a little bit chaotic. This one was particularly so with the number of vendors and customers involved. At one point, we had six different bridges going on trying to resolve this issue. And then as the day went on, we would come up with different theories. We would have to work really hard to implement them because of all the tool access problems. And then we would actually see a little bit of relief. Things would look a little bit better for a few minutes only to have them 
start really not working again. And so as you get your hopes up each time, and then you'd have them crushed each time, and as the hours started to pass, this just really started to result in, in a feeling of helplessness. So as we went through the day, we started taking more and more drastic action. Obviously, we were able to eventually resolve this. We did this by killing VLAN by VLAN. And when we killed one particular VLAN, pretty much instantaneously, traffic patterns started looking normal and we knew we were onto something. So it would actually take us a couple days. We were very fortunate we were able to reproduce this in a lab. And so that allowed us to understand what had actually happened here. And so this all started with some routine server maintenance on an OS that's a different OS than most of the servers that we run. So when that server rebooted, it put an LLDP packet out on the network. And then due to a bug, our network software picked this up and interpreted it as spanning tree. And so it broadcast this out to the network and then it was picked up by our load balancer. And due to a misconfiguration in our load balancer, this got rebroadcast back to the network, basically creating a, a network loop, creating a network storm and, and taking our network down. So we would learn later that this was a great example of complex system failure. So we had multiple failures in the system that had to happen. We had latent failures. In fact, these configurations have been in the system for months. And then the, the failures were changing throughout the day. And just to give you an idea of kind of some of the chaos and the challenges with, with the troubleshooting, we had actually looked at this particular maintenance and we had said, hey, this, this timing sure seems coincidental with when this outage started. But when we troubleshot it and looked into it, we said, you know what? No, it's a victim of what's going on in the network and, and it's not the cause of that. It would, it would take this reproduction later in the lab for us to